an action by the Israeli and U.S. government to take down the Iranian nuclear program. Now, this is fascinating. It turns out that they created a virus called uh, Stuxnet, and it, it's an amazing virus. It got launched in 2009, and uh, people who are like Symantec and, and others that fight viruses noticed it. They're like, it's all over the world, but it's really weird because it's not slowing down computers, not wreaking havoc. It's a virus that appears to be doing nothing. And how strange, right? And so why is it out there? Well, it turns out that it is a virus that is dormant. It, it has uh, what they describe as dual warhead, and it had a man in the middle. Okay, now let me explain what those are. The dual warhead is one part of the virus goes in and lays dormant until certain conditions are met. Okay, the second part of the virus, when those conditions are met, kicks in and pretends that everything is just fine. So, for example, the way that it actually happened in Iran was uh, the virus that they created, Stuxnet, needed 984 computers to be connected at the same exact time to be doing this specific task. Otherwise, it doesn't create a problem for you at all. And actually, Symantec figured this out. They're like, 984 computers? What is that about, right? Well, it turns out when weapons inspectors went into Iran last summer, they saw oh my god, Iran has 984 computers that have just been shut down. It was this, the virus was specifically micro-targeted for Iran's centrifuge program. And now the man in the middle is the part of the program where it, it takes over all the computers, takes over them, and then, but tells the people running the computers that everything is just fine. It gives the same announcements that it normally would have given, it gives you the same exact reaction it normally would have given, but secretly, it's destroying the program. And it would spin the centrifuges so fast that it totally obliterated them. And uh, by the time that they realized what was going on, Iran did, they're like, what? But the computer's telling me the same thing, but these things just got destroyed. They're like, wah, sick their line. The Israelis and the Americans have struck. Now, of course, if you ask the Israelis and the Americans, they're like, what? What? What name so? Stuck's that? Never heard of it. But they're half winking. For example, Retiring chief of Israel's Mossad intelligence agency, Mayor uh, Dagan, uh, said that in recent days that it, Iran had run into technological difficulties that could delay a bomb until 2015, and uh, at their Natanz uh, uh, area where they were developing these um, nuclear energy. Now he's apparently described as a guy who's normally gruff, but was grinning when he said it. Okay, now, speaking of grinning, we had the same exact reaction from one of our guys in America, uh, Obama's chief strategist for combating weapons of mass destruction. It's a guy named Gary Samore, and he said with a smile on his face, I'm glad to hear they're having troubles with their centrifuge machines, and the U.S. and its allies are doing everything we can to make it more complicated. <laughs> but they're like, did you do it? He's like, oh, what name so? I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, now I'll tell you the reason I like this. Look, you, had, you got two choices, right? Because these guys, the people in power here, were dead set on making sure Iran didn't get nuclear weapons. Now, some of you out there, maybe in America, great majority of you think that's a great thing, right? That we were dead set on that. Some in the rest of the world might think, well, what business is it of yours? Why do you get to have nuclear weapons? Iran doesn't, et cetera. But no matter what you think of that, if America and Israel were set on destroying that program, which they absolutely were, I can tell you that, there's two ways to do it. One is to go to war, and the other is to do something like this. Between those two options, I love this option. Now, you know, and here, you got to give credit to Bush, too. This program was designed and, and began in the last couple of months of the Bush administration. And when the Israelis asked the Bush administration for bunker busters to bomb those complexes, Bush said no. I, I, out of all the things Bush did, I would give him the most credit for this. And then when Obama came in, they presented him with a program. He said, I love it. Speed it up. Let's make it even quicker. Okay? This is all reported by the New York Times. And so they went forward with this, and now it looks like even the Israelis, who were like, we've got a bomb. we got a bomb any day now. They're about to have it, are now saying, ah, take a load off. They're done until at least 2015. We don't need to go to war. We don't need a bomb. Come on. I'll take that any day of the week. And look, do I trust Ahmadinejad or the Iranian clergy with nuclear uh, capability? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I mean, if Iran had a democratic government and they said, we're going to use nuclear energy for P-51 
peaceful purposes and we can prove it and show it, etc. Okay, that's a different question. But for these guys who fixed that last election, ignore the will of their own people to trust them with nuclear energy, that's a tough call, man. I, and I, Would you want to run with nuclear weapons? I wouldn't, right? And so now they're not going to get them for at least another five years. That's a win, man. That's a big win with minimal losses. Now, when you go to Iran, by the way, there were some losses. A couple of the top Iranian scientists were assassinated. Of course, when you ask the Israelis and the Americans, they're like, what? Oh, they were scientists. Hmm, who knew? Okay, so those guys lost their lives. The top uh, Iranian scientist is in hiding inside Iran because they're scared to death that they're going to kill him too. Okay? Now, again, that's, you might consider that political assassina assassination a horrible thing, and I understand. Much better that than an entire world war, as we saw in Iraq, that killed hundreds of thousands of people. Right? Uh, and when they asked Ahmadinejad, hey, look, what happened to all your centrifuges? It looks like you're in a bit of trouble here. Uh, he had a, a, a funny reaction to it. He said, the cyber attack caused minor problems with some of our centrifuges. He said, luckily, quote, our experts discovered it. Yet they discovered it when all your centrifuges were destroyed. That would be a little too little, a little too late. <laughs> okay. He's like, hmm, it doesn't look like they work anymore. What happened? We have discovered that they have been broken. <laughs> Doesn't really help you, big guy. Now, don't get too excited. The downside of Stuxnet is we did it to them. Could one day they turn around and do it to us? Is, is, have we opened Pandora's box to real devastating viruses that attacked our governments or perhaps businesses or perhaps private individuals? Ah, well, that's a warning for the future. So as much as I like this better than the other option, I'm very worried about what it could do in the future. We'll see if they could find a way to put that genie back in the bottle, but I suspect not.